Hello my fellow flight simmers and YouTubers. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike Vertisim and today I'm going to show you uh, another FPS app uh, that will uh, change your flying forever. This one is uh, the third one. We first had the dynamic LOD, then we had auto FPS and now from another developer, Mistrax. This one is called Smooth Flight. All right, this can be the game changer you're looking for. So let's jump into it and I'll show you everything you need to know about uh, setting this for your system. All right, so first of all, you have to download two apps, two programs. And you can download it from uh, Mistrax from his website and it's called the Smooth Flight app. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description below and on the website you can read what the app is all about really read this for yourself and there are things about benefits everything you put a whole story together there and then at the bottom you can uh, download smooth smooth flight files so you need to programs to download and that is the mobiconnect.zip and then the smooth flight zip if you already had auto fps or dynamic lod you probably have the um, mobiconnect in your community folder if not download it unpack it copy it to your community folder restart the flight sim and you're good to go after that Download Smooth Flight, unpack that into any folder on your computer and start smoothflight.exe. Once you have started the sim and you open Smooth Flight, you will see this window. In here, you can see a lot of things. There's a lot of info. If you want to use it in VR, check the box next to VR. If you wanted to use it in 2D mode, leave it unchecked. I'll use it in VR, so I'll keep that one checked. There you see your actual frames per second, your TLOD, your OLOD and your altitude. On the other side you will see your frame rate. Here you're only gonna set your minimum acceptable frame rate. Here you have your dead zone and your smoothing. Next are your limits. This is where you set your terrain level of detail limit and your object level of detail limit. Your lower and your upper limit. I have it set to 50 because I want to see cities that are just 10 15 miles away when I'm flying VFR. My upper limit is 131. That's enough for my system. I don't have a 4090, I have a 3080, 10 gigabyte of RAM. I'm running out of VRAM when these things are higher. None of these settings will be the same for everyone. It all depends on your system. How many RAM do you have? Do you, what's your video card? It all depends on your system. Then again, we got a landing mode. It will come in effect at an altitude of 100. But it says, because this is an extra thing, an extra thing that you don't get with uh, auto FPS or dynamic LOD. You can get this all the way up to about 500 feet. I think the default is about 33. I have it set to about 50, which is fine for me. And then you have the taxi mode. I haven't enabled this one yet. You can set it even lower or higher and then enabling by checking the box. And there are some other tweaks. And also this panel is for new functions that may not yet ready for prime time but we're in the process of playtesting. So once you've set that, back to FPS, start the sim, start flying, and you will see your FPS change. What you set here is not what you will get. What you have here is what you have. Oh, there's still one little thing I have to mention, and that is for the quest users. If you have a quest, you will see here at the uh, number six, in VR, the smooth flight applications can be brought into the virtual 3D space using the Oculus Meta app. Then you can see the whole panel. You bring it into VR, you will see this whole panel. You see this little square in the upper left hand corner. When you click on that, you will only see this. And this is what you need of course. Let's have a flight with the Comanche approaching Sydney through the clouds and see what it does. All right, we are at Sydney and let's see how this goes. So we have to go to uh, this way, Point Erden. We're flying with live weather. 
We're at about three and a half thousand feet up, so we're gonna turn inbound to the uh, initial approach fix. And I dialed in the ILS for the uh, localizer 16 right at Sydney. And this is absolutely smooth. Alright. Oh, I love this. This is mega smooth. Uh, there's the airport. Gonna descend to about 2,000 feet. So, uh, that's for the gear. A little bit of right. This is mega smooth, and I really love this livery. It's so red. <laughs> it's, it's. Super red. There's the city. There's the airport. All right. So 1,700 feet. Here we go. Not using ATC or whatever. Just gonna fly. Towards Sydney. Look at this, this is butter smooth. Now what's the wind doing? The wind is blowing us a little bit to the right. And a little bit of tailwind up here. Amazing. Let's change this one to uh, heading up. A track up. Here we go. Gonna slowly descend, reduce the power a little bit, and descend. Keep the speed up. Beautiful butter smooth, guys. And I'm, I'm not seeing what the uh, the T lot is doing, so I'm gonna glance underneath my uh, VR goggles. Oh yeah, that's 50, 50 and then 25, 40 frames per second or something. And still it's smooth. And I'm happy with these settings because uh, when I fly VFR, I can see uh, far away. With the uh, minimum T lot of uh, what is it about 50? That's uh, that's good. When it's 10, then everything is uh, a little bit washed out. There's there's nothing to see but terrain. And it's all there's nothing smoosh.
Right, let's lower the gear. First stage of flaps. Slightly different in terrain, just right in front of me, just getting a little bit more detail, which is good. And this looks absolutely amazing, it's still smooth. This looks good. Right, everything is set. Next stage of flaps. Three big, cra big cranes uh, over there, probably from uh, I Love VFR. Alright, we got a crosswind 5 knots coming from the right. Here was a little glitch. That was my altitude setting for the landing. You're floating. And we can exit here. <laughs> Ooh, nice. This was nice. And when everything is but as smooth, you can really practice with these uh, these landings, and it's so much more fun to do. I think this uh, this one is a game changer. I tried the uh, dynamic LOD auto FPS, but uh, this one it's uh, really good. Oh, then that my altimeter when I started. But anyhow, I really love this uh, this program. It does what it does. It doesn't mess with the clouds like auto FPS when you um, check the clouds. The check mark for the clouds. I don't like it to change the uh, the detail of the clouds. I want it to stay consistent. Just play with the uh, the O lot and the T lot, and it really works great. If you don't set your settings too high for your frames uh, per second for your frame rate and your T lot settings, uh, the upper uh, limits. And the OLOT upper limits, if you just keep it in normal range, you'll be good. And let the, uh, the program do its magic, and it's all smooth flying. This is amazing. Love it. Alright guys, let me know what you think of it. Have you tried it yet? You probably have, because I'm not the first one uh, to cover it in a video. So let me know in a comment below what you like, what you don't like. And... Um, Keep in mind, you can't use both programs or three programs all together. You can't use Auto FPS and Dynamic Load and this one, Smooth Flight, together. It's either one of them, not together. Keep that in mind. Alright, guys, this was Mike 30 Sim. Thank you for watching. 
I uh, hope you like this video feel free to like and subscribe to the channel it will help me a lot we're on our way to 2500 subscribers so still a long way to go bye for now this was Mike see ya